Hello everyone, in this video we're going to create the ability to scan our environment like Revelio does in Hogwarts Legacy for example. Before we get started I'd like to thank all of my Patreon supporters for the amazing support this scene will be made available on Patreon. So for this video we'll be using this asset, it's easy performance outline, um, it works with all random pipelines. Now you don't need to buy an asset for this, you can look up tutorials for a shader graph in order to do this, but the problem with that is that obviously it will only work for built in and then the other shader will only work for URP or HRP etc. So I use this asset, it's been on sale countless amount of times, um, it's pretty cheap works for every random pipeline and it's just incredibly easy to use. And I think one of the best things is that um, it doesn't actually affect your current materials. And I'll be fair, that's one of the things I like the most about it. Um, the fact that it doesn't impact your materials means you can just do whatever you want with your materials. You can still have your outlines, you can still have your glow and you know everything else without any material impact. So yeah, really good stuff. Then uh, in order to um, cost um, the effect, I'll be using this free Mixamo animation. Uh, link will be in the description. You can use whatever you want, obviously. It really doesn't matter. Um, but this is a free animation. It's good. It does what it's supposed to do. So yeah, we'll be using this one. So here we are in our scene. So first things first, let's create a plane. There we go. Hundreds. I've got a um, basic material which I'll use which is basically just gray just so you know the floor stands out a bit from uh, well this one is better there we go perfect so let's create our character perfect now before we do the camera shot um, I would actually let's save this real quick um, I would actually like to go to the easy performance outline demo and reason for that is honestly really quite simple uh, there we go as you can see on this camera there's so many scripts so I'm just going to copy over this camera instead um, it's just easier there's just too many scripts um, and yes I could manually look them up but it's kind of like why there we go. Now the only thing that's missing uh, missing from this main camera is a uh, audio listener. So let's add that real quick, and we're done. Cool. So we can add our camera shots to this as well. Um, so camera shot. There we go. And um, well, let's set up uh, something really basic for the camera. So third person. Um, obviously, so it's going to be player, then local target, 0 0.5 and uh, 0 0.5. Um, I don't want any zooming, uh, that always annoys me. Um, then, yeah, orbit, and yeah, we can make this a tiny bit faster. And there we go. So yeah, nothing spectacular, just the basic camera, um, but it will look slightly better than just doing nothing. Cool. So next up, we're going to create a uh, basic cube. Zero, zero, and let's do five. Um, let's make this uh, five wide and um, four high. So it's it's high enough, well, let's do five high. High enough to basically block something. Then we're going to do our object. So this is whatever object you want to um, basically hide. <laughs> that's what it comes down to uh, what you want to hide there we go and uh, on this object we're going to add a tag so I have reveal um, and you can it, the name is completely irrelevant um, just something that makes sense to you so um, let's add reveal and we're going to add a outlineable uh, object and this basically dictates, um, you know, as you can see, we can see this. Now, if for some reason this doesn't work for you, um, it's because of those camera scripts. Uh, make sure those are uh, done properly. Just like I said, just do what um, do what is done in the uh, in the demo scene. It's just the easiest way to do it. Cool. Um, we can uh, change this a bit. So I'm going to do front and back. So um, basically with front back, we have options to um, change um, 
the way it looks. Uh, there we go. I like this little bluish new. Perfect. So we can have separate settings for seeing it through a wall compared to seeing it um, unobstructed. And I'm doing that because I, th I think it's just nicer. Um, so um, we can do a fill um, and you have do dozens of options. So you can do interlace, which is kind of like sci-fi-ish, um, you know, cyberpunk-ish. Um, you can do Fresnel, um, which can look nice actually for, Fresnel is really cool for like heat maps through the wall. Um, obviously something that this could be used for as well. Um, you know, you can do uh, different things. I'm just gonna go with the fill. Um, the fill is going to be based on the color as well. And the color, there we go. Um, and not as, yeah, something like this, cool. So it will look like this through the wall, obviously with post-process settings like Bloom, etc. cetera, um, it will look different. Now, the reason I'm splitting it up, um, as you can see here, um, is that I want to have a glow when nothing is obstructing it. If something is obstructing it, I would like that to be filled in just so it stands out a tiny bit more. Now that's optional, but it's nice to have that option. Um, so yeah, pretty uh, pretty sweet, cool. Um, so we need a tag, um, we need the outlineable script, and we need a collider. And once that's set up, we can just turn off the outlineable script and we're done. Now, one of the nice things here um, is definitely the fact that this doesn't impact the material at all, um, which lets you just still do material shaders like you used to. Um, yeah, it's, it's really cool. Sweet. Um, then next up, so let's give this a name. Um, revealable uh, object. Let's just call it like that. Cool. Um, and uh, the cube, I'll just put that with the plane. Then next up, we're going to create a, a sphere. Let's uh, put this all zero, zero, zero. Um, going to turn off the mesh renderer and um, use trigger. Now, obviously I would, you know, um, I would definitely recommend having some nice visual effects while doing this. I'm not going to do that for this video. It's just about the mechanic, uh, not so much about making it look really pretty. Um, so, you know, you can have some nice effects. I'm just going to turn off the mesh uh, renderer. So there will be a sphere, but we won't actually really see the sphere. That's what it comes down to. So this is going to be a prefab we're going to drop into the scene. So um, on enable, there we go. On enable, um, it's going to uh, scale. Uh, change scale, there we go. Self, um, and then we have the option to set a size. Now, one of the nice things here, um, obviously, is the fact that we can uh, tie this to a variable. So for example, in Hogwarts Legacy, um, you know, you have an upgrade point that allows you to make the sphere, uh, the, the reveal size bigger, um, which is really simple, because all we really have to do is just tie it to a variable. So um, let's add a, a global name variable, um, Revelio, there we go. Um, this needs to be vector three. Um, by default, I'll just do 50. And obviously it's a variable, so you can change the setting to whatever you want. And let's do um, size, really simple. Um, and then here we're going to do variable, uh, global name variable, we're going to drop it in and let's select our variable, there we go. Um, duration is the time. Now this completely depends on um, what you want. Some games have it be, uh, you know, have it take a couple of seconds, so kind of slow effect, um, often visually more impressive. When you're playing often quite more annoying as well. So really up to you. Um, I'm going to do one second, which is really fast um, when you really think about it. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, cool. Then the second trigger is going to be uh, tag enter. So trigger tag enter, our reveal tag, which we've put on this um, object. Um, and then the instruction is going to be um, enable 
components, there we go, um, of the target. And then, um, I love this about Game Creator too. Um, you know, it just looks up all of the components there are. It, I absolutely love it. Cool. Then, uh, wait. So I'm going to have this instantiate for about 10 seconds. Um, it takes about a second for it to completely expand. So let's do um, 8.5 seconds. It gives us like a small margin of 0 0.5 seconds, which is nice. Um, then we're going to um, disable component. And it's the exact same one again. So target and then uh, outlineable. There we go. Um, so it's going to turn on 8.5 seconds turn off. And sweet, that's pretty much it. Um, before I make it a prefab, let's make sure I didn't forget anything. So um, I'll just leave it here for now. Then um, we're going to add a trigger. So visual scripting trigger. And yeah, there we go. Uh, input and uh, now keyboard. The button you do, the input, is completely up to you. I'm just going to do E. It's no minimal distance, anything like that. Um, we're going to do a um, animation. So this will be a gesture. Play gesture. Um, we're going to be using the one um, I got from Mixamo, which one I showed you. Now, the important thing here is uh, in rig, make sure to set it to humanoid. Um, by default, it's set to generic. Um, and then hit apply. And in the animation, we want this to be turned on. Now, we want this to be cast at about this movement, which is precisely one second. Absolutely perfect for, <laughs> for timing things. I absolutely love that. Um, and obviously, you'd want to add some nice VFX to it. Um, definitely do that. Um, so we're going to play uh, this clip. Um, root motion, yes, is turned on. Uh, no delay, and we're not going to do wait to complete. We're going to do uh, wait of one second, then uh, instantiate. There we go, and that will be the prefab um, location player. Um, rotate is irrelevant, but yeah, sure, why not? Um, use pooling, yes, and duration, 10 seconds, yes, as well, perfect. So, all good, um, I'm pretty sure that's that's about it. Um, we do want to add uh, another weight at the end of um, 1.7 seconds, because the animation in total is 2.7 seconds, and we have already have a one second weight. Um, And then, um, <laughs> can't remember the name, um, for the player, the instruction, what is it called again? Um, controllable, there we go, I was, I was typing in playable, apologies. So controllable, um, we want that to be turned off, of course, um, during uh, this cost, because, you know, otherwise we can still move, which is a bit awkward. Um, so is controllable, uh, no, and then at the end, uh, yes. Now, if you have a different type of animation that works perfectly fine when you're walking, obviously you won't need to do any of this, um, but for our animation, that just doesn't work. So let's give this fair a name. Um, let's do um, revealing, it's not a good name. Um, and then we'll just drop it in here, there we go. Uh, and we can remove it. Cool. Now, like I said, it won't be some pretty VFX. It's all about the mechanic. Just add the VFX you want to it. So some nice particles, whatever, really. Um, and then on the trigger, we're going to add uh, this. There we go. And let's, let's hit play. Just um, see if this all works like we want it to. Cool. Going to hit E, and yeah, it's revealable. As you can see, um, looks all pretty. Yay, um, and that's pretty much it. 
Um, now, one of the nice things we can do um, is we can turn on uh, the mesh renderer just so you get an exp uh, impression of how big this actually is. So if we go into play mode again and we hit that E, then you see that for a large open world, this is actually really not that big. Um, it's not small, but yeah, it's really not that big. So at least that gives you a bit of an impression um, how large that 50 actually is, which translate roughly to 50 meters, um, you know, because it's pretty much one on one. Um, so yeah, it's really, really not that incredibly big. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, it's incredibly easy to set up, as you can see. Um, you know, obviously adding some nice uh, shader effects, some nice VFX particles will make it look a lot prettier. But the base mechanic is, um, yeah, just, you know, uh, about this, like, yeah, it's pretty simple to do. Now you can uh, change a lot of the settings on the camera. Um, so for example, the fact that, um, you know, my player was, um, it went through the player as well, things like that. You can adjust all of that. There's quite a bit to adjust. Um, you know, have a look at the demo. Uh, it does show you quite a bit to do. So I hope you enjoyed this quick video on how you can set this up with Game Creator 2 um, for any type of game where you want to be able to scan the environment. Thanks for watching everyone and I'll see you in the next one.